All right, and hey guys, and welcome to another Blender tutorial. So, today this is part three of our vector image importing into Blender tutorial scheme thingy. I uh, don't really know what to call it and just kind of came off the bat there. Probably should have thought about that before I started recording, but whatever. So, we previously um, edited our uh, PNG to a JPEG and GIMP and did some fine tuning with it and then we took it into Inkscape and made an SVG, a scalable vector graphic out of it and this time we're going to be importing it into Blender. So last time we left off with this window open, I don't need to do anything else so I'm just going to close it and I'm uh, just going to close these those explorers out just to minimize the amount of processing on my RAM. Um, and now we're going to go into Blender. So I have Blender open at my default. Your default may look a little bit different than this. I, I just like to start off in this view usually with these settings. So um, but don't worry, if there's any settings that need to be set, I will be able to specify them for you. So, with a clear, clean slate here, we're going to go to File, Import, and down here you will see Scalable Vector Graphics as an import option. Now, if this isn't an import option, don't worry. If you go to User Preferences, Add-ons, and then Import Export, and then you search for .svg, or no, I guess not, uh, maybe SVG? Yes, SVG. So you'll see I already have it selected here, but if you don't have this checked, it'll be, you know, slightly lighter gray. You just select that, and then you, it might take a second for it to load on your computer, depending on how fast your computer is. Then you just click the X button, or you may want to save it as the default, depending on what you currently have in here. So now we have that selected, and you should have this here. If you don't, you may want to get a different build of Blender. Some of your build may not support that specific script, so you should check that on the main website. But I think this comes in the trunk, so it should still work. So we're going to click Import Scalable Vector Graphics, and then we're going to just navigate to it in my confusing array of everything. And you'll see here, woman 01svg 3 kilobytes. It's not very big files because they're just basically paths. And then we're going to click Import SVG, and it might take a second. Now you're probably saying, well, where's my woman? Well, um, SVGs by default in Inkscape are very small. So one way to do this is to go into Inkscape and scale up the image until it's really big and then import it into Blender because then it'll be the correct size. But you can also just do it in Blender using the scale option. So we're just going to scale this 5, scale 5, and I think that should, yeah, we'll scale it one more time too. Okay, so, and then we're going to move the origin over to geometry and then this selection to cursor. And now if we tab into it, you can see that, yep, it's full. Just like in Inkscape, it is of paths and this is really cool it does get a little buggy in blender but this is more blender's path code and not the svg so this is a path and you're probably saying well what can i do with this yes it's here and maybe i could convert it to a mesh and extrude it but that wouldn't really help me now would it no it wouldn't but we can convert it to a mesh and do something else with it animate it so what we're first going to do here is we're going to press alt c while having the uh, curve selected and we're going to Select mesh from curve slash meta slash surf slash text. And this, what this will do is when we tab into it, you'll notice now there's a bunch of really annoying Zs here. And this is because it's converted it the old fashioned way with the triangulate faces. B surfaces, which is the new modeling tool in Blender, has not yet updated to fix this, but I'm sure at some point they will. Now, if we were going to animate this and add a real armature to it and make it all fancy, it would take a while, it would be annoying, and we would probably want to go back in and, you know, delete all of these, um, all of these just really annoying uh, edges and go ahead and do it ourselves. That's not what I'm going to do. Um, delete edges. So we could do that, you know, go back and do it manually, but for right now, this is all we need, um, just for a basic quick animation to show you all what's what. So um, if you wanted to, you could add an empty here and... This is pretty cool. Um, we're just going to add plain axes. We're going to go over here and we're going to move it down to where this hand is. Then we're going to go into the hand and we're going to Z so we can see in wireframe mode. We're going to press C. We're going to scale this up. And then we're going to just select um, this little bit of the hand right here. And then we're going to go over here, tab out real quick, select the, the empty, which is about to become a hook. I was about to say that. And then go back to select the mesh, press tab, and then you press Control H. And then you'll see this menu come up. You want to hook to selected object. So now, if you take this uh, empty here and you move it around, you'll notice it kind of picks up the hand. It's not very clean, but it definitely does work. So you can also do is you can rotate this like an X. Um, that works, yes, but not perfectly. If we want to, we can actually go back in here and we can 
select these two and cursor to selected. And then we can go back here and uh, delete the current hook. It's over here in the modifiers tab. You can also just do this directly from the modifiers tab, but uh, I just do it the old way I learned it, which they, a while ago, so they, it did not used to be a modifier. It used to be a sort of parent entity kind of thing. So I'm gonna select these back and uh, select this, you know, do the same thing again. Control H, hook to selected object. So now if I go back to my selected object, it should do a more natural turn with it. And you see the little hand there. Oh, hey there. Um, <laughs> sorry. Yep, so there's that. Um, you could also weight paint this hook um, with the vertex group. You can do uh, weight painting where you basically just paint this over. Ooh, that's, you see, that's the problem with um, having these vertices not be correct is that um, really what's going to happen is you're going to get this weird thing. Just It's not going to look right. It looks a bit odd. I see I keep accidentally going over there. But you can weight paint it and then use the weight paint to influence how much this will affect it, which makes it a more natural bending. You can also add an armature to this, which will make it uh, just move more natural um, and use weight paints with your armature as well. That's another tutorial in itself. Armatures is a big, big thing that I could not cover in this small tutorial alone. All right, so... Uh, that's about it. Uh, that's all I had. I uh, hope you enjoyed this three-part series, and uh, like and comment and favorite and all that good junk, and hopefully subscribe if you enjoyed this. All right. Thanks. Bye.